I'm standing here by a cannon that was placed here in 1821 as a lookout over the Arkansas River. On the other side of that bank was Indian territory, wild, open. A fort was established here because of so many massacres, raiders on the river, kidnappings. And so they established this fort for five years. And then when they finally got it finished, uh, they were ordered to abandon this fort and go 50 miles on upriver to Fort Gibson, which is right outside of Muskogee, Oklahoma, and do the very same thing, attempting to hold the Indians uh, and not have any more trouble. But trouble did come. It's part of history. This cannon was for a fight. In fact, it never really did get in a fight. It just was a presence of a fight. Today, we're living in, our, in a time when we know we're going to have to fight. Uh, but it's a different fight. It's not going to be with cannons. It's, it's now over words. We're fighting over the power of words. We're fighting over what traditional marriage is. We're fighting over about what right and wrong is. Uh, we have a Supreme Court that is uh, afraid to, to examine and break open all the doors that are going to have to come open. Uh, we're looking at a, a uh, house of representatives uh, that is more pagan than it's ever been. It is said that 76% of all the House of Representatives in the country say that they are Christian. But how can a Christian with any conscience at all toward the Bible, toward the Holy Spirit talking to them to say, the day a baby is born, if the mother and father so chooses, they can still kill that baby. And so I don't know what Christianity means. We're fighting over that word as well today. And as we're in this fight, it is a fight of words. It's a fight of positions and a fight of truth and a fight of uh, holding a line about what we're going to allow and not allow, what we're going to call law and what will become the, the lawless. In fact, now many of the things that I say, while I say them in love and I say them from a gospel-centered position of love toward all people, it's still considered hate speech. So we don't need to roll cannons in for this fight, but we do need the hearts of our Americans to fight hard uh, symbolically with the power of words in your state, in your county, in your schools of what is right and what is wrong and, and what because it just says it's a national law, what do we do when we come to a law that we can no longer say is moral and is ethically right? So when I talk about Congress and Senate and we talk about the political ploys to make a law go through knowing that the consequence is losing the favor of God, and America has lost the favor of God. One week ago, uh, Representative Nadler of the Congress said, of any religious institution who talks about the will of God, it has no place in this Congress. Now that's what he said, Jerry Nadler. He says he's a Christian. Now, why does the will of God have no place in this particular Congress? It's because we're changing the words we're changing the lifestyle of the words. We're changing the impact and power of the words. If you say, I believe that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, that's hate speech. I find it interesting looking at an article about Mars, some of the information that's come back. They say now they have proven that life is on Mars because of a bacteria they found and it proves life. Well, if that bacteria on Mars sent to us from pictures to Earth can prove life, then why is not a baby in the womb that we can see through the, through the scans that that baby is alive? Why is that not considered life? It's because the Planned Parenthood group in this country has changed the words of what life is. We have a fight on our hands. We've always had a fight. There will always be a fight. And I don't mean a revolution and war and guns. I mean in the state houses and the, and the senates and our schools and our homes and our churches. Our pastors have to stand strong about the power and the impact of these words that a marriage is between a man and a woman. And when they talk about public accommodation, that the Equality Act will demand that we open the doors and say publicly that we accept this behavior in our church, uh, the war intensifies. So when we, when we come to this point, I'm standing looking at the bank of where a, a great battle never took place, but where they were prepared for one, we have to prepare our hearts uh, to fight purely 
and, and holy before the Lord in the power of these words. This is Bob Shelton, and that's Victory Voice today.